In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build this ridiculous $1,250 PC that can game, live stream, and even create some content. But most importantly, Antec is doing a huge Christmas giveaway, so make sure you stay tuned throughout the video. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at my latest $1,250 PC guide, talking about why I chose all of these parts specifically, and then of course, we're gonna benchmark it. And if you're new here and you wanna see other PC build guides just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by CDKoffers.com. CDK Offers is yet another online key seller that sells a ton of software and game keys, but most importantly, our favorite cheap Windows 10 Pro keys. To get a legit activated version of Windows 10 Pro, go to the website link down in the description. Here it says the price is $13, but we'll get it cheaper than that. Select buy now, type in the promotion code ZT25 to save 25%, and now the total price shows just $10. Select submit order, choose your payment method. I recommend PayPal for these types of websites. Click pay now and go through the payment portal. And after that, you'll see your order is complete. To get your key, click on user center. You'll see your Windows 10 Pro purchase, but the order is still processing refresh the page about after like a minute and then select view keys and codes. Select get the key and here you'll finally see your Windows 10 Pro key that only costs $10. To activate this on a computer, press the start button and type in activation and hit enter. Here you can see that it's unactivated so we'll select change product key, paste in the key, click activate and then after a few minutes you'll see that Windows 10 Pro is now activated. This is actually how I activated the PC that we're looking at today. Once again, head on down to the link in the description to scoop up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for yourself or just $10. Now before we jump right into the parts list, I do want to set the record straight. This PC is not 100% optimized just for gaming and it's more geared towards content creators, live streamers, or pretty much anyone that just wants a little bit more power than just gaming power. The reason why I say this is because with this style of build, you typically end up taking money out of your graphics card budget and putting more of that into your CPU, more RAM, and sometimes better SSD storage. Now don't get me wrong, you can certainly play games at ultra settings and crush some FPS numbers with this, but if you're only a gamer and want the most performance just for that, then I would highly recommend checking out the build guide in the top right hand corner. With that being said, let's start off with the processor like I just mentioned, and this here is the Ryzen 7 2700X from last year. The 2700X is rocking 8 cores and 16 threads, which isn't quite necessary for gaming just yet, and this will provide better performance with things that take advantage of more cores as opposed to something like a Ryzen 5. Now this is last generation's Ryzen 7, which isn't a big deal at all because it's still plenty powerful, but the reason why I went with this is because we're starting to see a ton of deals on last generation Ryzen 7, which significantly drops the price compared to this generation's Ryzen 7 3700X. Moving on, next up we have the motherboard, and here I really wanted to take advantage of a Gen 4 NVMe SSD, so I had to go with the brand new X570 platform, specifically this ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming 4. This is more of a budget option compared to the entire lineup of X570 motherboards. It's not even rocking a USB-C port, which is pretty upsetting, but once again, I was really only interested in getting access to a PCI Gen 4 M.2 slot. Speaking of which, the next product we're at is the SSD, and I got this on a really good Black Friday sale, and this is the Sabrent Rocket NVMe 4.0, and I'm actually really excited about this. As you all probably know, these Gen 4 speeds are absolutely crazy, as you can see here in the Crystal Disk benchmark, and editing videos on this thing would be ridiculously smooth compared to a normal Gen 3 drive. Now, this is one of those products that I would definitely not recommend for a pure gaming PC build guide, sure you might see some faster load times, but at this price for one terabyte, better make sure you're doing something that's worth this price point. Moving on, next up we get to RAM, and here I went with a 32 gigabyte kit of G-Skill Trident Z, also another Black Friday sale. These are clocked at 3000 megahertz, definitely paying a little bit more for the RGB here, but once again, I wouldn't go above 16 gigabytes if you're building a pure gaming PC. The 32 gigabytes is only for people like live streamers who need to game, live stream, and do other things at the exact same time. Adobe Premiere Pro uses as much RAM as you'll give it, etc. All right, the graphics card is up next. 
FX, and here I chose the XFX RX 5700DD Ultra 8GB model. Huge thanks to XFX for sending this one over, which by the way is my first GPU sponsorship outside of Nvidia directly, and this is definitely one beefy graphics card. This double dissipation model is all about cooling using the Ghost Thermal 2.0 design, and as you'll see in the upcoming benchmarks, this beefy GPU definitely gets some nice low temperatures. It's also rocking an all black and clean and minimal design, which is what you guys know I typically go for in these builds, and at $300, this is about as good of a price to performance ratio as it gets right now. Following that, we get to the power supply and here's where the list of Antec parts starts and massive shout out to them for sponsoring the rest of this build. This PSU is the 650 watt gold certified high current gamer edition and it's fully modular, which means we don't have as big of a mess of cables hidden in the back. There's also a really cool feature according to their website called power cache. Basically, there's a capacitor at the end of the 12 volt cables, which will prevent brownouts. Not sure if this is a gimmick or not, but it sounds cool. This PSU is actually sitting at a pretty good price for what you're getting, but if you're not interested in the 80 plus ratings or you don't care about the extra features, you could save a little bit of money and get a cheaper unit. To light up our build, we have the Antec Prism fans. In the back for exhaust, we have a single Prism 140 millimeter fan, and the rest of it is a 120 millimeter kit that included three fans, the controller, and two RGB strips. I'm only using one of them. All of these, including the 140 millimeter fan, hook up to a single controller, which is pretty neat, but don't mind that it's buried in the uncable bandage mess back here. And finally, the last part that's housing all of this is the case, and this is the Antec P120 Crystal, and this is rocking a very unique design, but I'm actually really digging it. The biggest difference for the P120 Crystal, as I'm sure you've seen by now, is that there's no mounts for front-facing fans, and there's only the side-mounted fans like I have here. Ideally, this would be much better with a radiator, but I think we're still bringing in enough cold air like this for this build. I actually really like this design because when you're looking at it at your desk, you can actually see all of the RGB fans and not like at an angle, which is what you typically see. I also like how the side panel swings outward and you can completely lift it off. It comes included with an aluminum GPU holder to prevent sag, and there's a ton of fan and radiator options in this big open style design. With all that out of the way, here's what our pretty lengthy parts list is looking like, and as you can see, we're sitting right in between $1,200 and $1,250 at the time of making this video. I actually ended up paying way less than that given all the Black Friday sales, so definitely be on the lookout for deals with this build. With all that out of the way, it's now time for my favorite part of these videos, the benchmarks, and after that, we'll get to the giveaway information, so I'm gonna roll through these benchmarks pretty quickly. First up was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and in 1080p with pro settings, which is essentially just low, we got an average of 204 frames per second. Following that was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. Definitely take a look in the top left-hand corner for the temps and usage numbers, by the way, for all of these games, and here in 1080p in high settings, I got a solid FPS average of 160. Probably wanna go to Ultra for this one. Following that was the new Gears 5, which I have a dedicated benchmarking video on, and in 1080p in ultra settings, I got an average of 90 FPS. Rainbow Six Siege followed up next, and in 1080p in ultra, we got exactly 200 FPS using the built-in benchmarking tool. And finally, the last game that I decided to benchmark was Call of Duty Modern Warfare, also have a dedicated benchmarking video on this one, and in 1080p in ultra settings, I got a 148 FPS average. Before moving on to the other benchmarks that I wanted to include, you can already tell that this is more of a 1440p gaming PC, which I didn't benchmark, you could keep the settings at 1080p and pretty much max the settings on every game, which is what I did, or you can go to 1440p, that choice is up to you. For a few extra benchmarks, just so you can all grasp how powerful the system is, the next one I ran was 3D Mark Time Spy, and here I got a very solid score of 8,317. I also decided to fire up the PCI Express benchmark from 3D Mark just to make sure our X570 motherboard was working properly, and I got a score of 14.27 gigabytes per second, which checks out. Following that was a multi-threaded run of Cinebench R20 and our 8-core 2700X scored 3,693. This is at stock speeds, by the way. And finally, just in case you skipped over the parts list, here are the numbers again for the Crystal Dismart benchmarking, our Sabrent Rocket Gen 4 NVMe SSD. All right, so there you have it. That's the parts list and the benchmarks for this $1,250 gaming PC. And since you made it towards the end of the video, here are the details of the giveaway. Antec is giving three lucky viewers an Antec P120 Crystal case, and all you have to do to enter the giveaway is comment down below what you think about this case, but try to be constructive and don't just say you love it or you hate it. Also down in the description are links to Antec social media pages such as their Twitter and Instagram, so make sure you're following them over there. And finally, the giveaway for the case is US only, so sorry to my international viewers, this one doesn't apply to you this time. Well, there you have it. That's gonna wrap up my $1,250 PC build guide. Huge thanks again to Antec and XFX for sending over some of these parts. Like I just said, comment down below what you think about this P120 
crystal to be entered in the giveaway. And after that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, we're checking out some baller peripherals. You don't wanna miss that video.